So now we are back to the MonsterVerse, and I bet we are never going to be more addicted to any other monster franchise than this one. The incarnations of these epic kaiju are just legendary, get it, pun intended. They have adapted almost every characteristic of these gigantic creatures to a near perfect level, be it the gravity beams, or Mothra's bioluminescence, or Godzilla's thermonuclear pulse. And this will be the topic of the day, and we will be discussing the temperature of Godzilla during his nuclear meltdown and the atomic pulse of his that incinerated almost everything in its vicinity including the false king Ghidorah. So enhanced by a nuclear explosion in his resting ground, Godzilla inadvertently absorbed the energy that boosted his power on a massive scale causing his skin to be volcanic in appearance and atomic pulse to be even more deadlier. However, it adversely affected the kaiju's health, effectively imposing a death sentence on him, but it became something else entirely. It was predicted that his meltdown during the latest scenes in Godzilla King of the Monsters was going to take him down along with everything else in the area. However, he utilized the excess energy within him to transform into a burning form and then release it in three or more consecutive blasts that killed Ghidorah. So how hot was he during his burning form? Let us dissect this question piece by piece and come to a reasonable answer. Let us start by assessing the scene when he walked by those buildings and they just melted like butter exposed to a kitchen stove burning at max power. Now as we can see, the buildings are made of mostly concrete and reinforced with steel and there were also structures close by that were iron or more specifically steel. So what is the actual melting temperature of these substances? Concrete is a bit more than 1000 degrees, while iron melts at a bit more than 1500 degrees Celsius, while steel has a lower melting point at 1370 degrees. These temperatures will gradually melt them in a slow manner while being exposed directly in contact with the source. But as we can see, these structures were close to 30 or 50 meters away from Godzilla in his burning form. So how did they melt in an instantaneous manner? Godzilla must have been radiating a temperature of such a high level that even the insulating effect of the air around him became nullified. Air is excellent at convection but the amount of heat that can be transferred is minimal because of the low mass of the substance and cannot store a great deal of heat. Trapping air in layers is a very effective way of insulating an object. So how does steel and concrete melt instantaneously when they are at a distance from burning Godzilla? As we can see in many movies, documentaries and short videos, People can stand near melted metal and even a volcano crater but with protective clothing. But the protective gear isn't burned or damaged even a few feet from it. So it stands to reason that Godzilla was at least twice or three times as hot as melted steel. Given the fact that anything melts instantaneously near the surface of the sun which is around 6000 degrees Celsius, Godzilla might have come close to it and it would make sense given the thermonuclear state in which he was at and is the same as the state in which the sun is in, and both of them have higher temperatures in the core, the place where the nuclear fusion takes place. Their surface temperature is just the tip of the iceberg when compared to the true potential. So now we know how hot Godzilla's burning form is, at least his surface, which radiates out heat to melt buildings, Ghidorah and Emma Russell. But what about the nuclear pulse? As we have seen, Ghidorah was near immune to his atomic breath as well as his burning temperature. But Monster Zero perished when met with a thermonuclear or atomic pulse. Now again, it stands to reason that the atomic pulse was way hotter than his burning form. We can only explain this with an atomic bomb explosion. So the primary form of energy from a nuclear explosion is thermal radiation. Initially, most of this energy goes into heating the bomb materials and the air in the vicinity of the blast. Temperatures of a nuclear explosion reach those of the interior of the sun, almost 100 million degrees Celsius and produce a brilliant fireball. This fireball loses the initial temperature but still radiates out as it becomes bigger. So thus the temperature decreases gradually but still in a matter of seconds. Therefore the atomic pulse of Godzilla ranges from 100 million degrees Celsius to a few 10,000 degrees, enough to disintegrate everything in its path. And with this comes the end of this video. So do like, share and subscribe for more related content about monsters, creatures and kaijus.